2024. And it's 533. And uh, Craig Bora. Present. Uh, Juanita Garner is online. And Val John. Present. David Bernard. Present. And Deb Schwartz is Present. online. Online. We're going to hand all that in right. just a second. Okay, I like them. Why do we have to have a motion? This is an emergency. Thank you. Yeah, they're both uh, at home to keep us all healthy and. Uh, <clears throat> Up the presence and participation of both uh, Deborah Schwartz and uh, Anita Garner to our meeting. Can I have a second? A uh, second. Okay. Uh, unmute yourself. Okay. Yeah. I'll second. Roll call, please. Uh, um, Craig Borba? Yes. Juanita Garner? Oh. Yes. Al Jones? Yes. Uh, David Norgard? Yes. And then Deb Schwartz, I, yeah, okay. Okay, okay, so great. Welcome to the meeting, guys. You're now <laughs> legal. The city requires a person. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, uh, acceptance of the agenda. It's the room of the treaty. Where's your agenda? Acceptance of the agenda. Oh, yes, I move acceptance of the agenda. I second. Okay. Sorry. Okay, uh, so we'll first. Who, who first was the uh, David? Al no, no. uh, first. Okay, I'll David first. Not second. Um, to accept it, Jordan. Okay, uh, roll call. Craig Norga? Yes. David Garner? Yes. David Norga? Yes. Deborah Schwartz? Deborah? Deb, can you hear us? No. Uh, now I can. It's is everybody using their microphones? Because I can't hear that well, but present. <laughs> yeah, our microphones are kind of crappy right now. Okay. And, that's, and that's Deborah, I need a true. yes from you on that because we're redoing the agenda. She said yes. She said yeah. present. Oh, Deb, uh, do you accept the agenda? Oh, sorry, yes. Thank you. Okay, Roman numeral three, public comments. Don't see anybody. Do you see anybody from your seat? No, I don't see no one. Uh, we do have two people online, but uh, one is Bill Wiley, and then one is a guest. Is the if the guest online wants to give public comment, just raise your hand. Use the raise hand icon. I think they're a student observing. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, consent agenda. I have a motion, please. I so move. Second. Okay. I have a first and a second. Any discussion on that item? Hearing none, roll call, please. Craig Thorba? Yes. Juanita Garner? Yes. David Norgard? Yes. Deborah Schwartz? Deborah, we are accepting the consent agenda. I wonder if it's um, our sound on Zoom. You want to hear something? Yeah. I can only really hear you, Jeannie. Uh, we are accepting the consent agenda. So put your mics closer. Okay. Did, uh, Deb, do you accept the consent yes, agenda? Yes, I do. Yes. All right. Thank you. Administrative reports of Friends of the Palm Springs Library. Sure. <laughs> is it? My microphone just died. Here. <laughs> Oh. Okay, I'm going to try this. Um, so the Friends have some upcoming events. Um, they will resume their meetings next week um, for their board. Um, they've been in hiatus for the summer, um, but their upcoming meet, uh, events are they will be having a book sale at the J.C. Fry building on Saturday, September 28th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Um, they are also presenting Palm Springs Beach, Donna Brazil, on Tuesday, October 22nd at 7 p.m. at the Richard Center for the Arts at the Palm Springs High School. Tickets start at $35, palmspringspeaks.org. They will also be hosting an art, architecture, and design book sale on Saturday, October 26th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the lobby of the main library as part of the October Modernism Weekend. 
and uh, they are planning for their holiday bazaar on Saturday, December 14th in the lo lobby of the main library from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. featuring themed gift baskets, gently used books, and specialty merchandise. Thank you. Okay, any questions for Julie? Okay, hearing none, uh, Palm Springs Public Library Foundation. Is Bill online? Yes, Bill's online. Come We're going to promote him. Okay. Are your microphones dead? They have died. Yeah, mine's dead. <laughs> They're all like one, one, one dot. <laughs> Uh, okay, Bill Wiley, give us your presentation, please. There we are. Okay, we have arrived. I gave uh, Peter Pearson that evening off. <laughs> so I'm here to make the report for the foundation. And I want to emphasize mostly the um, upcoming event, uh, Pride on the Page, uh, coming up on October 20th. Uh, it's going to be a great event. But um, firstly, Thank you all again for your generous grant uh, to help us support our uh, part-time executive director for the next two years. Um, it's, a, it's certainly an enabling grant and helps us um, move further and faster uh, than we could have otherwise for sure. So thanks again. Um, there is a, a meet and greet. I hope you've all gotten the invitation to meet up with Peter um, Thursday of next week, I think it's the 12th. He's looking forward to it. And, um, thank you for those that are going to be able to attend. What time? Uh, is it? I think, um, I think that's going to be at, um, five 30. On Thursday, the 12th. Yep. Okay. Right I'll... after the foundation board meeting. <clears throat> okay. Cause I have to appear before the, uh, Public Arts Commission to ask some money. So that's also at 5 30. So. Ah. Well, he'll be at the board meeting, Al. The okay. foundation board meeting, if you're able to attend that, you and Deb. Board meeting, yes. Val. Uh, Val, this is. Now that I turned it on. Val, this is Craig. Is, isn't there another meeting next week, too? There's one on Tuesday. Yes. Fundation. Yes, um, this the steering committee for the capital campaign is having a meeting. I know you're invited. Yes, and I'm planning right now to be there. Great. Is, that should is, be that should be a good one. Um, that should be a good one, uh, Craig. So thanks for making time for that one, um, and Jeannie and everyone else that's gonna that's gonna be there. That should so, be a good one too. One so. Uh, Bill, can I ask a question? Yeah. Yeah. On Tuesday, I had it says Library Foundation reception at four thirty. Is that yes. what you're talking about? Yes. 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 Okay. If you were, there's only certain people who are invited to that because of right. the um, the capital campaign. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I'll be there for that. These are all free. Yes. It's so great. that. Um, so that uh, is the first two items. And then, uh, of course, the, we've spent a lot of time this summer uh, on the uh, planning for that capital campaign and for our annual fundraiser. And there'll be more details coming out. Uh, and um, we're very excited. Um, uh, Deb and Al will see tremendous uh, progress that we've made in, in the last 60 days. Um, so it's great. We also have... Um, a new uh, a person that is going to be uh, join the board our board and become our secretary and um next week we'll be able to, after next week's meeting we'll be able to announce that person um very talented and um uh we're we're she's going to really help us uh, quite a bit in that particular uh, position so we keep we keep uh firming up our um roster and Everybody's working hard and uh, very, very enthusiastic uh, for the fall coming up. So, again, I wanted to spend most of the time on Pride on the Page, and it's October 20th, starts at uh, 10 in the morning, goes um, till 5. Julie's been um, absolutely in instrumental in this with uh, our events chairman, uh, Corey Roskin. And we have a tremendous um, 
lineup that's going to be over at the Cultural Center. Uh, we've got six panels, um, four or five authors on each panel, and um, we're gonna we're gonna talk about a number of uh, different topics uh, with people who come to those individual sessions. And um, we've got, um, uh, for instance, we're gonna do something on um, on film, and uh, Dave Carger from um, Turner Classic Movies is gonna be on that one of those panels. Another panel um, has. Um, our uh, chairperson for our communications committee, Rebecca Olardi, she's going to be on that committee. Um, we've got uh, a number of different uh, authors from all over the place, um, and, and and it's just exciting. I wanted to make sure that you knew why we do this uh, particular event, and there's really two big reasons for that. One is we're an organization made up of people from uh, our, our neighborhood here in Palm Springs and in the Valley. And we're an organization not for profit like many of our um, colleagues and, and sister organizations. And we want to give back to our community. And this is a one way we can do that, uh, enriching our culture, we feel, with this event. We're not aware of that maybe there is an event similar to this in the country, but we're not aware of that yet. Uh, and I, we think it's unique and, and it's growing in, in reputation. Uh, this is our third year. Second reason we do this is to increase the uh, awareness of the foundation as a not-for-profit uh, vital organization in the community. And this helps us spread the word. You're going to see some really creative um, visuals and graphics uh, that are going to be coming out in our um awareness push for this particular event. And um, we also, <clears throat> three years ago, when not too many people knew that we were around, um, you know, Corey and Julie put a, a shovel in the ground and started digging us out. And um, this, is, this is an event associated with um, our name. So again, awareness and um, giving back to the community are the primary uh, drivers of this. Julie, I don't know. Maybe you have something more to say. I, I, we're got the sort of headliner people for the evening will be announced um, shortly. I think that's going to be kind of a fun, comedic-oriented, lighthearted uh, discussion that's going to take place with some folks that have written uh, 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 television scripts and movie scripts and and have acted in some of those. And I think it'll be kind of fun for people that are familiar with some of that work. Uh, and that, and again, I don't want to announce it prematurely. I'll let the, I'll let the, the group uh, take care of that. But again, a lot of tremendous work going on and um, we're thankful for it. So uh, just please go to the website. You can uh, do an internet search on uh, Pride on the Page, Palm Springs, and that should bring you to, uh, or you can go to the foundation website and, and click in on that. And you'll see what I'm talking about. It's it's, it's um, going to be a super day. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Questions for Bill? Uh, Bill, I uh, was on your web page, and it needs to be updated a little bit. Is that going to be happening soon? Um, what, uh, anything in particular, Craig, you want us to address? Uh, yeah. We uh, know we have, We yeah, go ahead. David's letter um, as the lead for the foundation is uh, 2023. Yes. And your update on your board members. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we're, yeah, we will get to that. Um, part of the issue is uh, the communications committee with, and the website have been working so hard on Pride on the Page that we, we've fallen behind a little bit. So, We'll take that under advisement. Thanks for pointing that out. Appreciate it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to your letter, Bill. <laughs> Which one is that? Well, the, gonna be, you're the new president. Yes, that's right. That's right. Um, we, we have, well, we have one and we submitted it. And I think what we want to do is is take the one that was in our annual report uh, to Jeannie and um, put that up. And, and uh, so I'll work on that. All right. Thank you, Bill. Any other questions for Bill? All right. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Roman numeral 5C library staff.
Hello, thank you. Um, yes, the foundation did turn in a letter, uh, our their annual report, which we'll put in the October packet for you. Um, so for the library, we are still continuing with our diaper giveaway program. Uh, right now we have sizes from newborn to size five, although we are running low on size five. We're completely out of size six. We have some uh, bonus items this quarter, which are newborn uh, A2 formula, plus some other baby care items and toothbrushes, some laundry detergent. We've got some really nice things that are provided at no charge to us, which we give away to the community from a nonprofit from Los Angeles called Baby to Baby. And so there are no paperwork requirements, no library card requirements. Families can just come in once a week and ask for items and we will give them uh, the weekly supply of whatever we have. And uh, so that's been going great. Uh, lots of diapers, lots of diapers. So um, it's it's been fun to, to help out the families. Summer reading, we had uh, excellent participation. We had 527 people participate in summer reading, which was a 15% increase over last year. Um, the breakdown for that, adults, 168 adults, 77 teen, 190 children, and 92 preschoolers or um, early readers. And they uh, checked in 1,001 times. Uh, we count, they get weekly check-ins and um, then they also track their reading. And so for the pre-K children, they read, they counted the number of books they read. So they all as a group read 1,678 books. And then the children, teen and adults uh, track their minutes read and they read 137,940 minutes <laughs> which equals 2,299 hours, which equals one person continuously reading for 95 days. <laughs> so um, nonstop, 95.79 straight days of reading at the library. <laughs> So we had a great time. Uh, the Friends of the Library provided some wonderful grand prizes for us. The Sustainability Commission provided eight bikes, one scooter, and nine helmets and nine locks. And um, it was really a wonderful gift that they gave us this year. And businesses turned out and donated gift cards and free, free coupons for ice cream and whatever, you name it. We had a lot of freebies for the community, thanks to our community business partners. And uh, we also had some shows and some kids, like I said, some kids read some books. So we had a good time. They also got free books. So uh, every week that the children uh, checked in, they got a free book. Uh, the adults got a voucher, everybody got a voucher, but um, the adults got a voucher for the book sale, for the friends book sale. And then the, the kids, children and teens all got uh, new paperback books that we gave them. They got to pick their titles this year. Um, we also, you mentioned um, Palm Springs Speaks, we're very excited about that, and Pride on the Page, we're very excited about that, and then Julie, do you have any other things, and do you need a microphone? <laughs> <laughs> I do have other things, and we'll see how this one lasts. Yeah. Okay, so September is library card sign-up month, Thank so you. if you don't currently have a library card, please come in and get one this month, especially. Um, it gives you resources galore at home or while you're at the library, so please come and get a free library card. Also, uh, programming for adults resumes this month. Book clubs have already started. Our virtual author series continues. We have three opportunities this month to attend. Our genealogy society um, have, will begin meeting again monthly starting this Saturday once a month, and um, the second Friday film screenings are going to resume on September 13th. And also, um, we will have a film viewing on the documentary Judy Bloom Forever, discussing a focus on censorship and uh, book banning. So that'd be great. And lots of other programs. So please check our website for all of our upcoming programs. Um, the library will also host the Riverside County Health uh, System. They will be having a vaccine clinic um, at the library on Thursday, September 12th, from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. No appointments are necessary, and vaccines will be available while supplies last. They're, they're bringing numerous um, vaccines. Right now, they are not bringing the flu or COVID, and, but that could change up to the day before. Um, they are bringing MPOX and, um, oh goodness, TVAC and hepatitis. Uh, hepatitis B, 
and some other ones uh, that I can't remember, but I've listed them all. Um, and uh, there's also a flyer, and, uh, but like I said, if things change, they will bring flu and COVID if it's available. It just wasn't available at the time that we uh, scheduled this, but they said that that could change up to the minute they're coming. So we, whatever they have, they will give out for free. Like I said, you don't need an appointment, just come between 11 and two to the library. Um, also, October is going to bring lots of special film screenings and other events. Um, we're going to be talking with the producer of the film Heaven and Earth, and we're going to screen that film. We're also going to talk to a local a poet who was a Palm Springs High School alumni. Maude Tom is going to do a presentation, and many other things are scheduled. So again, check out our, our schedule online. And then um, finally, the library will be an early voting site also a ballot drop-off site and the general election voting site. Uh, ballot drop-off is going to be starting in early um, October on the 7th um, and will continue until uh, general election voting day. Early voting begins at the library in October 26th. And then of course the general election voting date is Tuesday, November 5th. So the library will have lots of activities going on. Any questions? Okay. Thank you. Questions from trustees? I guess so. One question for Jeannie. Who on your staff then, or is it you, who goes out and um, gets the gifts from various vendors and community businesses? Well, um, it's a team effort, but I would say that the primary person who does this is our team librarian, Stephanie Lane. She's been just doing an outstanding job. Because you really don't have a development officer or anybody's fundraiser, and yet you're able to secure a lot of... Yeah, we just we dial for dollars, and uh, we, uh, we are... We're, it's really great to have these community partners. We build relationships with them throughout the year for different things, like Julie might do a, a, a program, Science Behind Ice Cream, and then we have Ben and Jerry's, and then they're our partner, and we can just say, hey, can we get some coupons? And then they say, of course. You know, so. Um, somebody has to go out and do all of that, and that's. Yeah, it's a lot of legwork, but um, yeah, a little too. We write, we write letters, we send emails, we do phone calls. Yeah. yeah. And it's like who you know, and then you go. It's building those relationships with the with the businesses in town. It's been it's been a great we built that up year over year. That's good. Great. Thank you. You may want to apply to the regional access project. They do funding for community events. And your culminating activity for reading summer, they may be able to cut you some cash and sponsorships mm -hmm. go up to five thousand, but there's a number of them for one thousand that they That's would find. So uh you might want to talk to me later and I can give you a connecting piece on that. That's nice. You know, um also um with our friends in the library, uh Nancy Morrison works at US Bank and US Bank gives us a grant each year. And so this year we uh got ten thousand dollars from there and that helps us with the summer reading program. So uh, excellent partnerships. Kind of like the friends. Yes. Okay. Anything else from the library staff? No. Okay. Uh, let's get into the annual six treasurer's report. Al. Yes. Uh, we did not have a meeting in August. I get this correct. Uh, and so the last balance sheet we had was from July, and then with this one, it it actually was an increase from. One oh, oh actually, it's one. I've got to get these right. It was an increase from one point six eight five to one point six nine three. So it was an overall an increase of four eight thousand. I am guessing on this, Jeannie. I have to point to you because so many of the figures are just. I think it's because it started a new fiscal year. So it, it's it's nice that we're kind of there. The increase eight thousand dollars, but there's no detail to show you kind of where it actually. So. Right. And um, yeah, like you said, it is the start of the new fiscal year and things are still trying to get right. flattened out where where they're supposed to be. Um, the numbers. Right. Yeah, so we'll get a more accurate report in October. Hopefully October, November. With yeah. The, with the detail we're used to. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, bottom line. Uh, I just don't know all of the sub accounts. The only new thing really that we got was that three thousand dollar gift that was uh, yeah. quite a, six months back, and then we spent that on the books that you had approved. So then you see that three thousand go out, go out of the account, and um, there might be interest income or things to to square up as well for the last year. Maybe that's what that is. 
maybe that's what it is because at the beginning of the year they might have budgeted they always estimate what the interest is and then when they close out the year they might put that back so that might be what it is i'd have to investigate for a yeah. bit it, it does every year this happens right. it does we're but waiting for them to, to get everything closed out and squared yeah. away and restarted yeah. so, right. so any questions for al at this time until they're purchasing they're okay uh, all right okay uh, thank you all appreciate it uh next is uh woman number seven do we need to accept the treasurer's report uh okay. yes if you okay and i'll am i allowed to make the motion to yeah, accept the treasurer's report? Yeah. okay I need, I, need, I need a second second okay any concerns questions hearing none uh roll call please okay so we're voting to accept the treasurer's report yes craig borba yes juanita garner Yes. Al Jones? Yes. David Norgard? Yes. Deborah Schwartz? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Roman numeral seven discussion action items. Uh, A is change meeting date for October meeting due to uh, Rosh Hashanah, suggesting Thursday, October 4th, 2024, to be held at the library. Right. Rosh Hashanah begins at sundown, and I don't. Based on the way the sun is right now, we can't make it to be finished by then. So um, we were suggesting the Thursday after our typical meeting, and then we could do it at the library. Uh, we'll record it. Because there's a conflict here? Uh, yes. No, but always, uh, yes. It's not Thursday, October 4th. October 4th is a Friday. Uh, yeah, that's my fault. October 3rd. Okay. Yeah. How's okay. October 3rd? No, it's a wonderful day. I'm All right, so that'll be the next meeting. Okay. Is that, uh, thank you. Well. I guess you need to uh, make sure it's okay with everybody and then vote on that. Okay. So do you, I guess you ask, okay. do you have any discussion or? Well, I'm saying, is there any concerns about moving this uh, meeting to October 3rd? Good. Okay. And what about those online? Is that going to be okay? Okay. All right. So, um, um can I have a, oh, they're uh, asking their hands. They're okay. They, they went like, yeah. Okay. okay. So, can I have a motion for this move? I move that we move the October meeting date to October 4th and third. Third. the library. Third. Oh, third. 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 Yep. <laughs> Can I have a second? I, sec I second that. I have a first and a second. Uh, change the meeting. Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Okay, so we are making a motion to move the meeting date for October to Thursday, October 3rd, at the library, 5.30 p.m., same time. Oh, at the library. At the library. Not here. No. So, Craig Borba? Yes. Juanita Garner? Yes. David Norgard? Yes. Deborah Schwartz? Yes. All approved. Thank you very much. And Jim, thanks for being sensitive to the calendar to raise this question. Next year, what we're what we're going to do, probably November or December, is we will look at the 2025 calendar and set it. And then we don't have to do this when things come up. We'll just have it. We'll, we'll have that scheduled. And we'll adopt a calendar for the next year. Good. Okay, uh, Roman numeral 7B, approved library annual report fiscal year. So you see, you see before you the um, draft of our annual report. We like to always include a highlight of statistics from the previous year. Um, some information that I did put in my article were some highlights of uh, changes. So our our foot traffic was 17% increased over the year before. Our um, physical checkout was 6.5% more and 13% more for downloadables. We issued 19% more library cards, 19% more programs were held, and 29% more people attended those programs. So we like these upward trends. Um, 
we really took a hit with the pandemic. And so now we're, we feel like we're, we're coming back slowly but surely. And we are excited about our upcoming renovation, which I can mention in the next day. But um, we always like to include a few stories about different things. We did get a grant from the Anderson Children's Foundation last year for $25,000 for uh, our teen STEAM program. And uh, we mentioned our summer reading. And, and then um, we did get a $5,000 grant for our Parks Passes Backpack Program. So uh, that's a, a, a lot of fun. We do have those available. There was some issue, some concern with the California state budget that they were going to cut the funding for the Parks Pass Program, but they found money for it. And so we still have the Parks Passes and we still have our little backpacks that you can check out. It comes with some really cute tools, um, maps and books, and um, whistle that you, you can keep the whistle, and uh, some other little little doodads in the in the backpack. So that's a, a really good program. So we are proud to present our annual report. Thank you. Uh, questions for Jimmy at this time? Uh, yes, Jane. Um, can you remind us? Where does this report go to? Who received it? Oh, good point. Um, we, as part of your bylaws, uh, we do present this annual report once it's approved by you. We present it to the city council as a receive and file item for them. So if that happens within the city. We also prepare a full, extensive statistical report that goes to the California State Library. And uh, all of the public libraries in the state provide that, Lisa and Julian. We, there's, again, team effort. But um, we provide all of our annual statistics to the state. You can view those online at any time. You can go and um, just go to Google and search for California State Library Statistics. And then you'll find this, the port, portal. You can, you can select different types of statistics. You can compare us to different jurisdictions. You can download it as Excel and then manipulate the data to see libraries with the same cities, same population, same budget, you know, kind of compare data across the board. It's, it's I love statistics. <laughs> Thanks. Is this item posted in the library once it's approved? Once it's approved, then we print copies and we do post it uh, in the library and we post it on our website. All right, any other questions? Okay. All right, uh, I need a motion to accept. So move. Second. First. Second. First and a second. Any further discussion on the annual report? Hearing none, uh, roll call, please. Okay, to accept the annual report, Craig Borba. Yes. Juanita Garner? Yes. Al Jones? Yes. David Norgard? Yes. Devin Schwartz? Yes. Thank you. Five. Yes. <clears throat> Princess Roma number 7C, discussion library renovations updates. Uh, can we... uh, library renovation is, uh, we are chugging along. And we have, when was our last meeting here? July. So um, our library steering committee had their July meeting. And um, David, you, you and Craig yeah. could give updates on that. And then um, we are mostly done with design development. And they are working on construction documents right now. And they're about... I want to say 60% done with construction documents. So we're getting close to the, the point where our construction documents will go to the permit process and then our building permit through the city. And we are working on that. And then in the fall, they will go for a plan check and then probably early January, February, they're going to go out to bid, and then construction will start roughly in May. So in between that time, we will have to move. <laughs> so uh, we've got a lot of things going on right now. Um, just uh, we've received some really nice renderings of, of the, the rooms and things. And then um, there was a discussion. We did present to city council, and, um, and so we gave them an update of the progress and then uh, we did also have a meeting 
to discuss, uh, there was uh, some concerns about the parking lot expansion. And so we did have a, meet, a subcommittee meeting on that. And that is still uh, up for debate at this time. We have, there hasn't been a hard decision made about our, where we're going on that one, but we um, are reviewing options, I guess. And then if uh, subcommittee members want to weigh in on your input, that'd be great. So a question you answered one, and that was about the, the parking. Um, so it's still continuing. Yes. The uh, the other question had to do with the move. Have you been looking at prices to move, and what's the timeline for moving? When does the moving start? Um, excellent question. Uh, based on the timeline, if everything stays accurate within the timeline, my personal estimations are that we will be uh, seriously winding down our programs in March and either moving in April or uh, moving before April, but we are locating a temporary location and doing tenant improvements, getting all of that ready. So we're going to start looking for space, I think, the end of this year. We did look earlier in the year, and then we realized we were way too early. So, so when you say this year, you're talking about time, time. November, December. November, December. We'll start thinking about... And what kind of space are you looking for? I mean, how big of space... It's it's hard to know. I mean, we could do we could do various things. We could have one big space where we put a lot of our stuff in and use it as storage, and then have a smaller uh, footprint for the physical temporary library. Or we could have offsite storage and have a smaller building. So we're flexible in what we do, but I, it just depends on what's and available. How, what do you have to cost the time that the library would be closed? You know, my personal estimation on that also is about two years. Two years. For construction. Okay. Also, you know, construction has to happen, and they've got a timeline on the construction. But then we have to move back in. You know, we have to move in. We have to unpack. We have to put the books back on the shelves. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot. And um, that will take time. And so we, we, we want to have realistic expectations and not say, you know, and let's you, let's imagine done, that construction you, You've is, done this before too. Yes. So you've got some experience, which yes. is a good thing to have. Uh, um, Palm Desert. Right. We did the renovation there. Right. And, uh, yeah, very experienced in temporary locations and we moved our temporary location. We had a temporary location and we moved in the middle of it. So uh, I had two we'll temporary meet, locations. And the last question, we'll meet the deadline for spending the money then? For the grant? Yeah. Yes, the, we, uh, we're we completely on target to spend the grant funds within the grant deadline. Yes. So uh, everything looks good right now. We're still on target. Will the Fray building be done prior? No, the Fray building is going to be, uh, it's all going to be concurrent. So all the electricians will be working at the same time on both buildings and it's it's a possibility, but I wouldn't say it doesn't give us another option. You know, I wouldn't say that that's a realistic option option for a temporary location. You know, we do have the Wellwood too. It's not another location, but it is so small. That's very small. It's the smallest small small library. So it's not even a a great option. I mean, it, so we're we'll, we'll we'll keep looking and uh, we've got a really great department of the city that can help us with economic development they can help us with our with look, looking for vacant spaces yeah David, any comments? uh not about the uh, oh, sorry there you go. not about the renovation uh but about another topic uh, that came up at the special meeting of the steering committee namely parking I realize, as you just said, Jane, that that is um, still an you know, open conversation. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I want to, <laughs> I want to amend the conclusion that I came to at that special meeting. Um, I am now actually in favor of the plan by which we would have more parking rather than less. And I say that um, because I realize not only will we be busier significantly, I expect, in the long run, but there still need to be considered the other occupants of Sunrise Park. 
stadium, Mazel Center, et cetera, right? Uh, and so uh, if, if we were talking about, you know, putting up a ramp and cutting down all the trees, I'd feel differently about it. But um, given that we're talking about, a, a, you know, a relatively small percentage of increase or decrease, I favor going with the increase. Um, so I just wanted to say that because I genuinely was conflicted at the end of that steering, yeah, special steering committee meeting. Um, I, I understand the ecological argument. I respect it. Uh, I, I, I think there are other ways we can address that. For one, with the beautiful landscaping that's already planned, uh, to me, that sort of counters the argument to a considerable extent. So, um, I'm on the same page with David on this. Uh, we have four major uses at the park now. I don't see any of them cutting back. I see it increasing. I think parking is a problem there now. Uh, I'm on the board of Mizell. If and we have a board meeting, I'm at the far end of the parking lot because their parking lot is filled with all the people going there, using their facilities and having lunch there. Boys and Girls Club is impacted. I received a letter from Margaret, who is their a CEO, saying parking is a problem. I received a, a phone call conversation and an email from uh, Andrew Stark, who runs the stadium, saying he's very concerned about it. Um, and and now I am very concerned about it. I think we need more parking. It needs to be addressed. I would say that 90% of the people that use that area are coming to those four major purposes and they're not going there for any other reason. Um, so I would like to see maybe of, of this group coming from the found, uh, not from the foundation, but from the trustees, that we are recommending that the city look at increasing the parking. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll make it better for the four organizations. It'll make it safer for our citizens. Uh, heaven forbid somebody had to walk from one of those parking lots to the other today. Uh, it would have been really tough. So uh, any comments from those on Zoom? And you might, uh, we can explain too about what the real discussion is because they they aren't even, like the other three trustees aren't even a part of this parking lot discussion. Everything, everything oh, I guess that is oh, it. But, but to be transparent and public, for yes. public organization and our public meeting. Okay, the architects presented us two proposals regarding the parking space. One was to increase it by. So, um, well, I'll just uh, let, let me. Uh, the, uh, the architects have uh, given a proposal which will give us a net increase of 32 parking spaces. So, the, the parking lot expansion takes away some parking spaces to make room for the driveway and, the, and to cut out from the parking to reconfigure it. So, the net gain is 32 parking spaces. Um, it was more than that, but our archi uh, architectural, our historical architectural consultant, uh, Katie Warwick from ARG, Architectural Resources Group, has they've already addressed some of that uh, historical element concern and had reduced some of the parking already. So I think we lost maybe four spots already because it was cutting into the planter beds. And so they said the planter beds are historic, original to the Cody design. We think those should stay. So um, group four said, okay, fine, we'll take, we'll adjust and redo the parking. So they cut some of the parking spaces already. Um, the um, discussion that we had, it was um, because the community groups said, we think that this um, building, the parking, um, that's being proposed will block the view of the building. So we called a special meeting of our subcommittee uh, community group members to come together to look at it as a group to kind of see is that um, accurate or or what are what are we what is the complaint and what are, what do we see? So um, there were some we did some street views and you can actually go. This is interesting. Um, for everybody out there, you can go on uh, Google Maps and you can do a street view 
of Sun Earth Wedding. And then you can also select other dates and you can see historical street views of the library in Sunrise Park. Uh, the one specifically on there that's really impactful is from 2007 and it shows the street is tree lined. There used to be trees in Sunrise Park and they all blew over. So uh, it historically, the, uh, the library has not really been seen from Sunrise Way. It, it has been a tree-lined street. So uh, it wasn't always um, out there in the open as much as it is now. But um, so that was the discussion. We did, we had some views, some 3D modeling with cars, without cars. They kept, you know, toggling in with cars, without cars, so we could see what it looked like. And so then everybody got to give their, their feedback and their opinions on this group. We had um, 20, 22 people on the meeting, I think. Um, and so there was a, a mixture of comments and, um, and, and feedback. One, one comment I want to add for you too, since you were there and for everybody, um, there was a concern about uh, the green space for parks and recreation, but um, uh, for flag football and other lawn use. But this area that we're talking about is more um, sloped and um, full of big old trees. So I mean, not, not like, not old growth trees, but uh, trees that you wouldn't play flag football in among the trees. So this area that we're talking about isn't, isn't the same grassy lawn that Parks and Rec might've been speaking about. So, and even our partners, we're gonna come go out next week and do a walkabout in the in the grass just to kind of look at the parking lot and look at the space. But there were concerns of safety for our Boys and Girls Club. They have issues with parents crossing over to the grass parking lot to pick up the kids in the dark. And so uh, there were pros and cons on both sides. So I don't know if that's the longest short history ever. I appreciate those comments covering it. David? Um, yeah, just a couple more notes. Um, in my recollection of the conversation at the special meeting, there were two arguments presented basically to decrease the park. One was the ecological, less asphalt, more green. I get that. Uh, the other, as I recall, and what I perhaps prompted the conversation in the first place, was the view going north on sunrise, uh, that it would be limited by our cars. Um, I did not find that persuasive after we saw the uh, the models that were provided to us by the architects. Um, it seemed at best, at most, minimal. Um, so I'm not I'm not really persuaded by that. With all that said, um, I agree with uh, with Craig that we should go on record as uh, our as the board of trustees favor oops, <laughs> favoring um, the the plan with the larger number of spaces I, I hope I'm not misrepresenting your uh, I just position. Want, I just want more parking spaces and, okay. and and maybe there is a third alternative where they look at parking more in the southeast area. Um, closer to the stadium on the other side of the same. Yeah. I have a response to that. Okay. Um, it would cost us too much money and it would um, it would cross the sidewalk barric barricade that we've implied upon ourselves for our area. There's not a lot of room to go southeast because um, the stadium, the parking lot kind of goes up against the stadium's fence. And then um, So if we further our, south we'd have a problem? Further south, uh, we go a little bit south with this with this design, but we're not crossing the sidewalk that goes in the park. So there's a there's a there's a big meandering sidewalk that runs through Sunrise Park, and we're not breaking that barrier of to switch over into the park because that's we're counting that as park, and we're trying to stay in our in our parcel. Um, but also, we're we're so far into this project that it would cost so much. We'd have to do change orders to get to council to even uh, have them draw up new drawings. Okay. With that so sort of is, is the city 
looking at Sunrise Park. I thought there was a committee set up to. Yeah, the um the Parks and Recreation Department is working on a an entire parks master plan, and they are working on that to do. Uh, it's basically a needs assessment of all their parks, and then down the line, Sunrise Park will be uh, master planned and um looked at on that. Aspect. So that's another thing. We don't have to do it all with the, with our library innovation. We don't have to address all of the needs of the whole park. Maybe that could be addressed when they do the Sunrise Park Master Plan. They can look at the other parking spaces or the other areas. It is it's such a conflict. You don't want to pave paradise, but the people who need to use the paradise <laughs> need a place to park. <laughs> so you have to find the balance. So. Uh, David, can you formulate a recommendation that you feel comfortable with that the trustees could say we would support this or recommending this? Do you, um, 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 I don't know if anybody online has anything to add. I don't know anybody who's online. Yes. Juanita or Deb, do you have anything you wanted to add? Yeah. So yes. my, my understanding is that the master plan for the parks it part of it is to kind of unite um, the different partners in Sunrise Park, and I I don't know you know all the details of it, but I know that that parking, especially for Boys and Girls Club, was an issue, and it was something that was brought up in the master plan plan um, for that. So I don't think that we as of the library renovation need to worry as much about that as the city's as a city and Parks and Rec's master plan for that park, because I know that that was something that was discussed and something that it has been on their mind for a while. So, um, I mean, they could take care of that. They can make more parking and we can focus on our renovation. I mean, you know, I just don't want to increase the amount of money. Like we're going to be spending money on parking spots and we need to spend it in the library. Okay, so the proposal by the architects does increase the amount of parking space that we have presently. Yes, by 32 spaces. Okay, so we could make a recommendation to support that. Right? Yes, you could. So um, I will move here that uh, this board of trustees endorse and recommend the proposal put forward by our architects of in overall increasing the amount of parking by 32 spaces. I would second that. Any further discussion on that item? Is the 32 spaces the maximum or is that the compromise? That is the maximum at this time. Okay. All right, uh, any further discussion? Thank you, Juanita, for that input. Appreciate it. Uh, Roll call, please. So the motion is that the Board of Trustees endorse and recommend the proposal by the architects to increase the uh, parking spaces by 32 spaces. Or Yes, endorse. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes, that's it. We'll go back and review the footage to get the exact wordings, but. Okay. Yes. Okay, now we're ready for roll call. Okay. Craig Laura. Yes. Um, oh, Juanita Garner? Yes. Al Jones? Yes. David Norgard? Yes. Deborah Schwartz? Yes. All right. Thank you. And thank you, Rick, for their input on that one. Mm -hmm. uh, let's move to Roman numeral eight. Committee reports. I think most of the committee. Everything was dead in August. August. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. The thing in August. Any problem moving on to Roman numeral nine? Okay. Trustees, staff, comments, future agenda items. Um, I have um, four. Uh, October, we will um, receive and review the foundation's annual report. Okay. Um, I, I would like to see us put on the agenda um, a dedicated, excuse me, a dedicated item to the transition, so the temporary quarters and, and related topics. Sorry. <clears throat> okay. You want that on the October or November? Well, it sounds like in November would be more time with action. Probably. Will that work? Yeah, that's that's Thank fine. You. Any other agenda items? Yeah. Okay, and all the uh, subcommittees will be meeting during the month of 
September, so we'll have more reports and hopefully Nancy will She's been zoom, on vacation. Zoom in on it. Okay. Um, one quick question. Uh, is there a new date set for the next renovation steering committee meeting? Uh, no, though the special meeting we had was actually just extra. We hadn't planned on that one. So nothing set for the library steering committee this time. Okay. And of the 25 calendar, we're going to do that in November or December? It's, um, I'm not sure. So um, it depends on is are you, if you're all planning to be around in November or December. I don't. You know, I want to make sure, like, if people, anybody is going to be absent in December, I want to take care of it in November. Right. But I don't know if anybody has any. Is, is everybody good for November and December meetings coming up? Yes. Let's see what those dates are. Yes. November 6th. I didn't hear what you said. Yeah, we want to see uh, how many of the trustees are available for the next, uh, for the meetings coming up in November and December. I think your microphone, it's just oh, your microphones. Awesome. So, it's not your fault. <laughs> would that be November 6th and December 4th? Yes. Uh, December 4th and November 6th, we were checking, we we're going to adopt the 2025 calendar, meeting calendar, but we wanted to make sure that everybody would be around for the November or December meeting. I will not be here December. I will be here November. Okay. So we we do, we'll do that in November then. Thank you. Yeah, that's I wanted to be sure because you never know. And uh, 2025 calendar. Any other suggestions? Uh, Craig, real quick, um, question was asked about the next uh, foundation uh, board meeting, and that is going to be Thursday of next week, the 12th. And it will be at the library. Oh yeah, I, I'll I'll be there. He's got it. I'll yeah, start. I was going to be there. Deb's gonna, Deb uh, asked for it. Um, yeah, what time, Bill? Three p.m. Okay, local then, time. Then right after is the thing at eight forty nine, right? That's correct. Okay, got it. Okay. He's got it for me anyway. So. Okay, Craig. Okay. okay, any other comments? Okay, okay. hearing none. I uh, will adjourn the meeting until October. Oh, oh, no, no, no. Uh, October 3rd, 3rd at uh, 5 30. And that meeting will be held at the library. Long Springs Public Library, 300 South Sunrise Way. You can come and look at our parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> although, although, the, although the, li yeah, the library closes at 6, so it won't be super crowded. But so I move adjournment. Okay. It's 6 31 p.m. Thanks for everybody uh, tuning in and uh, see you next month. Sounds good. Thank Bye, y'all. Bye. 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 Bye